Today, we'll be giving you an easy to follow guide on how to dial in your new Breville Barista Pro or any other espresso machine. The first thing to know is that you are going to waste some coffee, especially if it's your first time using a new machine or a new grinder. This is completely normal and rest assured that after the first time, it gets much, much faster. Throughout this video, I'll be using a couple of accessories that I highly recommend as they'll make your life as a beginner barista a whole lot easier. Anytime I mention something, I'll have a link to it down in the description below. What makes dialing in espresso difficult is that there are three variables that impact how the espresso flows. The dose, how much coffee you put in the portafilter, the tamp, how you compact the coffee puck, and the grind setting. So, when dialing in, we will keep two of these variables constant. Starting with the dose, we will keep this fixed at 18 grams, as that is a standard dose for a double shot of espresso. There are two ways to ensure you'll be getting a consistent dose, and both will require a scale. Don't torture yourself and try to get by without one, this one works great and it can be picked up very inexpensively off of Amazon. The reason we need a scale is that the dose style on the Barista Pro and most grinders only run on a timer. The problem with using a timer is that as you grind coarser or finer, the burrs grind more or less beans in the same amount of time, thus varying your dose and making it frustrating to dial in. Once you have your scale, you can weigh 18 grams, pour into an empty hopper, and grind until completely empty, or Weigh the portafilter or dosing cup after grinding. I prefer the first method because it's a faster and cleaner workflow and doesn't leave any beans to get stale up in the hopper. If this is your first time dialing in a machine, start with the grind setting somewhere in the middle of your grinder's range. On the Barista Pro, that's a setting of 15. After grinding, it's important to ensure you have the grinds distributed evenly throughout the filter basket. A dosing cup can help with this, and so can two or three gentle taps to settle the grinds into the bottom corners of the filter basket. If not distributed properly, clumps or air gaps can lead to water channels through the puck and a bad tasting espresso. Now that we have a fixed dose of 18 grams nicely distributed in the portafilter, we need to ensure we are also getting a consistent tamp. This can again be accomplished in several different ways. Lots and lots of practice with a stock tamper, a calibrated tamper like this one, which stops at a certain pressure, or a palm tamper like the one I use, which stops once it hits these ridges. You don't need an aftermarket tamper, but again, it will make your life a little easier. So, now that we know we have exactly 18 grams, evenly distributed, and tamped in a way we can repeat consistently, we can pull our first shot. To make sure the machine doesn't stop the shot early, we'll put it into programming mode. Place the zeroed out scale with a shot glass under the spouts and hit the double shot button. Let the shot run until the scale reads 36 grams, and then press the double shot button again to stop the extraction. Now, note the time shown on the shot timer. To start, we want this time to be somewhere between 30 and 35 seconds. If the time is less than 30 seconds, adjust the grind setting finer. If the time is more than 35 seconds, adjust the grind setting coarser. Dose another 18 grams, distribute, tamp, and time the shot again to 36 grams. Repeat this process until you're within the range of 30 to 35 seconds. If you reach either the minimum or maximum grind setting and the flow is still not correct, don't worry, you can get more grinding range by adjusting the internal grind setting. I'll leave a video up here showing how. Pause the video now and get your flow into the right range before continuing on. But remember, we're not done yet. Once you're within the range of 30 to 35 seconds, you should now have a drinkable shot of espresso, but probably not a fantastic one. 
This is because we have yet to take into account the roast level of the coffee, and more importantly, your personal preferences. To do this, we need to understand a little better the two factors that influence espresso taste, strength and extraction. Extraction refers to how much coffee goodness the water was able to pull from the grounds. Over-extracted coffee can come across as bitter or astringent, while under-extracted coffee will often come across as sour or unpleasantly acidic. Strength refers to how much coffee goodness was extracted relative to how much water was pushed through. In the cup, this will relate to the body or mouth feel of the shot. Too high a strength can come across as thick or muddy in texture, while too low a strength will be thin and watery. Take a moment to taste your shot again and try to determine where it falls with respect to both extraction and strength. This chart is a great way to dial in to your individual preferences, and for each individual coffee. Note that if you fall into one of the corners, you may need to adjust both your grind setting and yield to reach your desired result. I recommend only changing one variable at a time and always remembering to go into programming mode on your Breville when pulling a shot after an adjustment. In general, darker roasts will be easier to extract, requiring a more coarse grind and less water. Lighter roasts, on the other hand, will require you to grind finer and have a higher yield to fully extract. This brings us to shot temperature. If you aren't quite able to reach your perfect combination of strength and extraction, temperature is the final tool in your arsenal. Raising the shot temperature will allow you to achieve a higher extraction without further reducing the strength of the shot. This is commonly needed to properly extract lighter roasts. Oppositely, very dark roasts may require you to lower the shot temperature in order to reduce bitterness without lowering the overall shot volume. So to summarize, choose a dose that's appropriate for your filter basket size and keep it constant. The most consistent way to accurately dose is to use a scale. Once your grind setting is all locked in, you can then program the timer function to dose the correct amount if you want. Next, distribute the grinds evenly to avoid pockets that could lead to channeling. Tamp in a way that you can repeat consistently each and every time. If you need an aftermarket tamper, get one. It can be an absolute lifesaver. Shoot for a yield of 36 grams in 30 to 35 seconds before starting to taste your shots. Then, use this chart to tweak your grind setting and yield to your personal preferences. And finally, use shot temperature to adjust for very light or very dark roasts if needed. As always, we'll have all of these accessories we mentioned linked down in the description below. If you found this video useful, please leave us a like, and even consider subscribing if you want to see some more videos like this in the future. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.